points or anything to bring up, then let me know. Okay, so you're gonna get a test tube and it's gonna have two bacteria in it. So what your job is, is to identify those two bacteria. So there are some methods and some tactics that will help you in identification and, and the process of identification. One thing is that Dr. Rosebeer and I want to try and take a step back. So yes, you can ask us questions, but we're gonna try to see if you can handle 95% of it. So to handle 95% of it, it's gonna just take time, planning, and try and figure it out. My goal is that you don't have a lot of homework for this. My goal is that you can get it done in class and that you can handle most of it in class time. If you have to do a little bit of your write-up or a little bit of some of your research and stuff like that, or your dichotomous key at home, if you need some time to figure that out, you can totally do that. But I'm hoping we have enough time. This semester, I think we have two more days than last semester. Last semester, I was like, we have plenty of time. And we did not. No one had plenty. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, I'm out of time. What do we do? And I was like, okay, let's all come in Friday. So we came in like five hours on a Friday and got it all done. It was a lot of work. So, what do I want to say about that? Um, so hypothetically, if you knew all of the experiments that we've done so far, which we can write up on the board, if you knew, know how to perform all of the experiments that we've done so far, really, that's all it is, inoculating and reading. That's kind of all it is. So if you feel pretty comfortable inoculating and reading your results, that's all you're doing. It's just figuring out the timing, like getting the timing kind of right, and just making sure, you know, gram seeding kind of takes a little while, um, and then just making sure that you know when to read your results. Yeah. I think <clears throat> doing the experiments isn't the hard part. I think knowing which experiment to start yes. with is the hard part. Yes, okay. So the reason I wanted you to read lab number 50, which if you haven't done that, do that before Thursday, read lab number 50, is because they kind of give you a little heads up of where to start and a little heads up of what to do. I'm going to give you a sheet today that you might have seen that Dr. Rosier and I walk around with. It's this sheet. So this sheet gives you some of the tests we've done, not all of the tests we've done. This is one thing I want you to write on your paper that I don't want you to forget. The biochemical test sheet does not have all the tests on it. So everyone forgets that. You get to the end and you're like, well, I don't have enough tests to run. I can't figure out what my organism is yet. Well, this isn't the only test there are. There are more tests than this. So if you've come down to like, I can't tell the difference between these two, but I'm out of tests on here, what do I do? I'm done. No, there are more tests. Just don't forget. This is not does not encompass all of our tests, which it should. It's like from the 70s. If I should probably revamp this at some point. This is what we all share. Um, okay. So one other thing I want you to write on your sheet is that you can uh, wait, let me talk about performatory tests later. Okay. Um, so Just go through step by step, and um, one thing I want you to write on your sheet is read the rubric. Don't forget to do that. If you don't, you're not going to do it right. I hate rubrics. I don't know why I think they're so boring, but I, I don't know how else to explain to you what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. So when I go to grade and it says treatment plan, identify disease causing organism, I go, that's worth about three points. Choose one potential diagnosis, that's about three points. Describe your patient's symptoms, cytopathic effects, that's three points. Treatment protocol, that's about three points. And so I'll add up your total points right here based on exactly what this says. So this, if you don't have what this says, then you're not gonna get it right. Okay, um, here, so one thing I've said every semester, but this semester I'm going to take points off for, because I want you to know this. 
so write this on your little sheet, is that your task list should be as you're doing it. So write, write, what, how do I want to say that? Can somebody restate that for me in a better way? Fill in the task list as you go. Yes, fill in the task list as you go. So some people have the exact same writing all done in one day. I could tell it was done in one day. So I, I want this page to be messy. I want this page to be daily. I want this page to be, this is your worksheet. As a scientist, you need to know how to, how to keep track of what you're doing. So I'll give you an example. I worked in a morning lab, which is a mouse lab. And there's 30 people working in that lab. And so if nobody knows who fed the mice, who cleaned their cages, who gave them the medications that they needed, who made sure that they exercised, who turned the lights out for a given amount of hours to make sure they slept, who it did a health check, who did. And so if you're not clear about every single thing you did, I turned the lights on at this time. I did this, like obviously ours are not gonna be that detailed, but when you work in a real, real lab, you have to be so detailed about everything you do because it, it, it will affect the results for a research project that 50 people are depending on. And so it's, it's really, really important to be able to, to start using this as a tool and for you to, um, to learn how to do it. So when you're like, I gram stained on this date, uh, it was, you know, um, clear results, this positive negative just it doesn't have to be very detailed just what you did on the day and just some little notes to yourself about how it turned out or what you could have done better or what you're going to do next something like that so this is your little cheat sheet this should be well well worked the whole time through all seven eight classes okay um, so then this one is all the biochemical tests you perform. So Dr. Rosemary and I are going to walk around and see, are you performing a test that's on your sheet or are you not? We want to know that you're writing it down, the test you perform. And the reason is, is because we've had students in the past that go through and run a battery of tests, but only write down the ones here that made sense. Because... You know, I, I think it is good to err on the side of more than less, but also you, you know, for example, I'm going to give you this. So here for catalase, this, these organisms are here are catalase positive, 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 positive. So if you're between two of these organisms and they're both catalase positive, why would you run a catalase? So that's what we're looking for is we're looking for why are you running a catalase test if both of your organisms are positive? If you're like, well, this one was, um, I'm looking between an MR and a VP, and these ones, it would help me decipher. So just thinking through that, like what, what test is gonna help you next? What, if I'm, I'm pretty close and I feel like, okay, I've eliminated these three, so I have three organisms left that are possible, what might it be from there? So what, what tests might I run from that? So we wanna know that you are um, thinking through it a little bit better than just battery of tests. But also, one thing I wanna say about that, because I, I emphasized that last semester, and I think people were just taking too long to decide. You know, it was like two days in, and I'm like, where's your, like, you gotta start running tests. Like, you just, just run some stuff and figure out what you got. So, so it's best to do some of your planning outside of class if you do have a few minutes to kind of plan it out. Um, but don't stress about spending time outside of class. You hopefully should be able to get it done as long as you're kind of moving through. Yeah. Um, if we were like, uh, could we ever run like a quick, like on today's test or counter test or whatever class, like at the end, just to confirm? Yeah. Yes, confirmatory yeah, tests are great. Oh, we just want to make sure. Like, I know it's positive, but I want to make sure that. Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. So I already know what my organism is. I'm just going to do one more just to make sure. That totally makes sense to me. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not just like I have 
seven vials in front of me and I'm just gonna inoculate all these because you know I'm doing all of my organism A and all of my organism B running all the same tests. Well, they're two different organisms. So start planning out a little bit between your organism A and your organism B. Um, okay, so one thing I want you to write on your paper is being clear, be clear about labeling your organism A and your organism B. So I had a big problem with this every semester is that people forget which one was their A and forget which one was their B. So I tried to help you a little bit with that this time by, by including more, more descriptions of your colon, colony morphology. So um, I'll go over our street plate and what our street plate <coughs> will look like. that will give you slants and okay. you'll have a slant of A and a slant of B. Okay. But the thing is, is you need to make sure that you have two organisms. Because this is a, always a problem. Two, three, four students have a struggle with this. Yeah. Once we separate the two organisms, it doesn't matter which one we call A or B, right? It's and your own decision. As long as we're consistent. As long as you're consistent. As long as you remember. Because sometimes they'll run all these tests on A and I'm like, no, that must have been your B because that doesn't make sense it was your A because this is what your A is. You know, so they get just get confused. So, so one thing um, about, so making clear, sure, making sure that you're very clear about the colony morphology of your A and the colony morphology of your B. I'll go through street plate techniques and, and describing that in just a minute. But here I added another place where you describe the colony morphology of your A, colony morphology of your B, so you're making sure to run the right tests on the right organism. Okay, um, so all of your tests, every single test that you're gonna run is on this page. If you run out of room, you can write it somewhere else or attach another page, that's fine. And then here I've, I changed up our, my little indicators here a little bit this time because I wanted, I don't want you to write down what the whole like invic is for to tell the difference between intestinal bacteria gram negatives. Like you, I don't want you to have to write all that. That's for your own studying for the final. Here you're gonna say the test like um, indole. And then here you're gonna say your reagents, COVAX. Here you're gonna say your results plus or a minus or whatever your results are. Here you're gonna say indication. So here I think this will help you to say what does indication mean? This means that my organism has the tryptophanase enzyme. Or just say tryptophanase enzyme, you can keep it short. But just so that you know that you're like, okay, my organism has the tryptophanase enzyme, it has the gelatinase enzyme, it does not have an electron transport chain, it does have, you know, so that what the indication means is what that test indicates. And then reasoning why I ran this test. I ran this test because I had, I'm either between Klebsiella pneumoniae or um, Staph epidermitis or whatever it is. I'm, and give me some reasoning here of why you ran those tests. Yeah. Um, does the um, test, is, is, is that considered one test? They're all tests, they're all separate tests. And they're all on here too, it's like, H2S production, indole production, MR, BP, citrate, they're okay. all on here. So even in our lab, it was one test. They're considered separate tests. They're all considered separate tests, yes. Okay. Yes, great. Okay, so then here is the main point. This page and this page are the main points. So here is your unknown, unknown bacteria A. Here's your colony morphology again. Here you're gonna draw an arrow to organism A. So a lot of times students will get through their first street plate and then throw it away and forget. So it might be a good idea to take pictures of stuff, you know, just so that you have it so you don't forget. And if you have your gram stain, take a picture of it. If you have things, just take a picture of them. And then even when you take a picture of it on your picture, 
you can do the little pen and do like A, B. So it just helps you remember, or if you want to write it down, or if you want to just go through step by step and make sure you don't miss anything, it's fine that you throw stuff away. You can't really keep very much stuff. We don't have a lot of room in the incubator to keep all the backup tests. So if you have a picture of it, or if you drew a picture of it, totally fine. Um, so here you're gonna write your colony morphology. You're gonna draw an arrow to organism A from your streak plate. So which one was A, which one was B. Um, you're gonna do your, um, the, your gram reaction. So you're gonna have your, I, I, I thought we were gonna do it. I can't remember if we're doing two separate A and B or A and B together. Let me think about it. Um, so Kirby Bauer, we haven't done our Kirby Bauer yet. That's an issue, huh? Because are we doing Kirby Bauer after I'm doing? Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, 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 that's good, okay. Okay, so you're gonna do a Kirby Bauer. We're gonna do that. You'll, you'll have that already under your belt so you'll know what that means. Um, and then here's your fi final four confirmatory tests. And I'll talk about what confirmatory tests are and what that means. Um, so you're, here's your final conclusion of what you think your organism is. You only get a couple points off if you're wrong. So if you're wrong, you get two points off. It's not that big of a deal. As long as you, the most important part is that you did the rest of the stuff right. So, and that you're thorough. Mostly it's, I really do care about A for effort. I just care that you're being thorough, that you're being cautious, just like a laboratory technician should be. If you're, if you're dealing with your patients, is it chlamydia or does your patient have HIV or does your patient have uh, cancer? It's like endometriosis, like whatever your patient has, you have to be so careful to make sure that you're gonna diagnose your patient correctly. So just being really careful as you go through, that's what I wanna see. And then here you're gonna write up your whole treatment plan. You just have to Google something for your treatment plan. Your treatment plan, what you're gonna write on your treatment plan, it's all explained right here. And just less is more, you don't have to be so crazy crazy, but you know, just as long as you have everything that's on here, those are my little checking points. That's it. Um, okay, dichotomous key, you ready for that? Okay. So, you know, I did this last time for fun. Oh, let's just do it together. Okay, let's do it all as a group. Okay, so my daughter and I play, some of you already have taken my little, my daughter and I's game quiz already. So if you already know my animal, because I use the same animal every time, because it's a good animal. So we're gonna um, do yes or no questions. So I have an animal in my mind. You ask yes or no questions and try and figure out what the animal is. So anybody go ahead and start. It's a big animal. It's a land animal. It's a furry animal. Yes or no? No. Oh yes, I'm sorry, yes. I would say yes. Yes, it is a prey animal. I'm sorry, what? Yes. Question, Dr. Myers. Can you see it in this picture? Yes. Does it have a big neck? Yes. Is it a giraffe? Does it eat bamboo? Not a giraffe. Does not eat bamboo. Does it eat hay? <laughs> what is it? Hay yeah. grass? Yeah. Does it yes. does it naturally occur on the American continent? No. basically and we're narrowing down so when you're narrowing down like 
Okay, if you ask, is it a camel? You're, ask, you're gonna ask, is it a whale? Is it a camel? Is it a jellyfish? Is it a starfish? You have 10 million questions, right? You start off by asking a big overarching question. That big overarching question can be, does it live on land or does it live in the sea? Then you go on and you ask another big question until you're narrowing, 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 narrowing down, right? And that's the whole point of dichotomous keys. So we call it a dichotomous key, but also in the hospital setting, it's called an algorithm. So an algorithm in the hospital, they use these for everything, for everything, everything, everything. They're like, should I wash my hands? Well, yes or no. Like, I mean, they use it for so many things. And they use it because it's a great tool to figure out like, should I give my patient this medication or should I not? Should I um, follow up with a specialist? Should I not? Well, it depends if your patient is following these yes or no's. So that's what the point of an algorithm is. So what we're doing is we're doing the same thing to figure out what our bacteria might be. So remember, we're only dealing with bacteria. So what is one of these big questions that we might ask by starting? Gram negative and gram positive. Gram negative and gram positive. So we're gonna start by asking, is it a gram positive or is it a gram negative? And then we can start running bigger, bigger, more, um, we're asking less defining questions until we get to our defining moment. So when you run a test, for example, on your organism and you start with, um, you start with gelatin and you're like, well, these one, two, three, four, five are gelatin negative and these two are gelatin positive. So you can start with something like that, but it's a good idea when you're dichotomizing to go from, you have 20 in this section, probably not 20, I'd say 10. You'd have like 10 bacteria here, and then you're gonna narrow down to where you have like five and five. Then you're gonna narrow down to where you have like three and two. And then you're gonna narrow down so that's how you narrow your results into a dichotomous key. So you start with the bigger and go down, down, down as you go all the way down. So this can be way more tricky than you think it is. And the reason it's more tricky than you think it is is because it's hard to figure out, once you've run your tests and you've figured out what your organism is, it's hard to figure out what to put into these categories of how, how you would provide a directional, uh, diagnostic to another clinician. So I figured it out. I figured out what my, my bacteria was. In the future, when the next practitioner comes along and is going to run these tests, I'm going to show them exactly what they need to run so that they get the same results as me. So, um, okay, so what else do I want to say about that? So when you figure out what your organism is, and you start dichotomizing, the reason it's tricky is because it's hard to figure out what tests to put here. It's very difficult, it just takes time. It just takes practice. Use a scratch paper and try it a few times. Use a whiteboard and write it a few times on a whiteboard. And you're like, no, that test shouldn't go here. Let me put a, a broader test first and then narrow it down as I go along. Yeah. Would it make sense to do this as you go? Um, so it, it, uh, what do you think, Dr. Rosevear? Do you think it's better at the end? No, not really. Not really? I'd say what, if you're close to calling in on what organism you think that you have, then yeah, you could probably direct them through it, but I just don't think it would make sense to do to do one. Not that far. Yeah, I think so too because <clears throat> you're not sure if the catalase was your definitive one or if that helped where it helped you in the order i don't know if i'm explaining it right but i'll go through it one more time yeah go ahead dr Myers. do you want us to draw a complete map no matter what we get or do you want us to follow our particular organisms like if both of ours are gram positive do we still look at the g the gram negative end and draw what 
No, then you put nothing. We can over just here. ignore that we and not have to that. put that on our map. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'll show you. I'll show you what to do with your dichotomous key. Then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so as far as gram negative, gram positive, there are mycobacteria like Mycobacterium schneiditis. Of course, we're not talking about tuberculosis. Right. Those. That's like acid fasting. We're not going to deal with anything like that, right? No, you only have these. These are your only options of organisms. Oh, they're all there. They're okay. all there. Okay. Yes, they're all here. So you're going to have two of these. Yeah. Are we, do we need to do, do we two dichotomous keys, one for each? No, you just do one for your whole, for both, both organisms are gonna be on one dichotomous key. Okay. Yeah. So we won't have to do acid fasting? No, or endospore. <coughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so for example, Gram negative, and next I'm going to do um, citrate. So here I'm going to do citrate positive and citrate negative. So one thing I want you to write on your little cheat sheet, maybe make a little dichotomous key, little section of how to do the correct dichotomous key is that all positives go one direction and all negatives go the other direction. That's always with the dichotomous key or an algorithm will be the same format. If you want, if you get a yes question, it's gonna go this way. If you get a no, it's gonna go that way. It's, that's just dichotomous keys in general. Do you care what side we take as long as we just stick? Yeah. Nope, as long as you stick to your own methods. So here, if my organism was citrate positive, then I'm gonna carry on and run some more tests. The organisms that are citrate negative are gonna be E. coli, um, S. dysenteriae, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna write out the organisms that I'm eliminating. And I'm gonna keep going with the organisms that are along with my citrate positive test. And the reason is so that at the end, every single organism will be on here. So you'll have all organisms that are on this sheet on this dichotomous key somewhere. Yeah. So are we gonna make a dichotomous key for each one of our A and B? No, all on the same one. Yes, so for example, I'm just gonna give you the example of two gram negatives. So if it's not a gram positive, you're gonna write out all the gram positive organisms over here that you're eliminating. Both mine are gram negative. One is citrate positive. They're both citrate positive. One is um, oxidase positive, oxidase negative. However you want to make it look nice, it's up to you. I'm just giving you these examples, don't forget. So here with oxidase positive, if my organism, one of my organisms is positive, I'm gonna go over here and keep going. One of my organisms is negative, I'm gonna go over here and keep going. Until I eliminate that one, eliminate that one. At the end, I'm gonna have my organism A, at the end I'm gonna have my organism B, and that's what my dichotomous key will look like. So how many levels do we need? We need one, two, three, four levels. So here I would have citrate, oxidase. I'm just giving you a total wild example because I have no idea. One, two, three, so I would need one more. So here I'm gonna do um, urease positive, urease negative, here, I'm not, urease wasn't helpful with this organism, so I'm gonna be MR positive, MR negative. I'm just giving you examples, I have no idea. And then from here, urease, I'm gonna go gelatin positive, gelatin negative, and my organism was gelatin negative. This is my organism and this is the organism I eliminated. And these are the organisms I eliminated here.
So then same thing I'm gonna do. MR, I can use gelatin again. I can use something else, whatever it was, or I can just list it out. However, if it was not that organism, I list it out. Does that make sense? So we're doing four confirmatory tests. One, two, three, four. For so both organisms, you have to have four confirmatory tests that are not gram stains, that don't include gram. So you might do gram stain and then do one more test and figure out what your organism is. You're like, sweet, I already figured it out. Well, would you tell your patient they had trichomonas if you did one test? No, you run another test and make sure. So we're, in this case, we're running four confirmatory tests to double check and make sure that is the right organism. Yeah? Um, do students ever not know what their organism is after the fourth level? No, or, some get it wrong, but... Well, but do they ever need to run more or is four? You can run more. I, I don't even think you'd need to run more. Because if you do run more, you don't usually need it for your dichotomous key. And you can you can narrow it down. So like for example, if you're like, well, I ran six tests because I wanted to double check and this was I wasn't hundred percent sure, and maybe I ran one on accident, which is fine. But I did six tests on here, but actually I, it would, I ran six tests here, but I would have been already solid if I had run these four tests, then I would know. So when you're telling your next clinician to run those tests, you're telling the next clinician, if you run this gram and you do a citrate test and you do an oxidase test and a urease test and a gelatin test, this is the only organism that you're gonna get by getting there. So it, it helps another clinician to get to that organism if that's what the what the diagnostic is. Kind of with me? Okay, we'll go over it again. So this is just kind of an intro. Um, so you need four confirmatory tests, write out the organisms that are that you're eliminating. Every single organism should be on this dichotomous key. Um, anything else? Can you think of anything else, Dr. Rosier? Is that good for the group? What? That's the gist of it. Okay. 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 So it's tricky to figure out what's going in these boxes. It is because it's hard to not. What the hardest problem that you usually have, opposite than what Dr. Duffy said, the hardest thing that you, the problem is you'll already have eliminated by two tests. You're like, well, I already eliminated everything else. It can't be anything else. Well, how can I fit in two more tests? We'll go back up from the camel, back up to, is it a mammal? Is it go, go to where you're eliminating less, where you're eliminating less organisms per test. So go to a broader test then to a more narrow test where it only leads you to where you could have two, maybe three options here, and this option is your only option if it is gelatin positive or whatever. Yeah? Okay, so that's the dichotomous key example. So one thing I want to say about the street plate, and this is why I wanted everybody to be in this room and talk about it together at the same time, and this is why the whole department is giving everybody two extra days for this portion of it because we had such a hard time with it last semester and a couple semesters actually. So some organisms, as you know from your street plate, they like to do this for some reason. They like to be around each other. So to, to pull organism A and organism B from that colony and make sure, you know, if you start running all these tests and you have two organisms in your culture, you're gonna be so confused. You're gonna be like, but it's positive. And I'm gonna be like, well, it's not positive. It says on here it's negative. Well, why is it positive? Well, it's probably because you have more than one organism in there. So it's very hard to do that. And then it sets you back. Then you gotta start over. You gotta street plate again. You gotta figure out where that other organism is or what, it, maybe it's a contamination. Maybe it's 
they put the wrong organism in the wrong tube, which just happened. So, um, okay, so you have two. So, so this is what the students have the most difficult time with, is to differentiate between A and B. So which one is B and which one is A? So you have to look at the colonies themselves and look at the morphology and see like, are these, are there two different organisms on here? What do they look like? Are they one, remember like the entire, some are entire, some are lobulated. Some are creamy color, some are yellow color. So as long as you can see two different organisms on here, that's great. But what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to pull one organism and try and isolate it, and pull another organism and try and isolate it. So what you can do, what I'm planning on doing this semester, which hopefully will work, is surgically take organism B. You have to even, I would use my, my needle or something like that if it's very hard <laughs> to differentiate between two colonies. Surgically remove that. You have to go be so careful that you don't get that A in there. Take B so carefully and pull that out and then do another street plate with that organism. And then take A and carefully do another street plate with that organism and look to see, is there any other different colony morphologies on here? Does it look like I just have one? And then you can gram stain those and like, okay, I have two gram stains. Does it look like I have a gram positive and gram negative? If they're all one gram positive or gram negative, then we have another method that we're gonna do where we can do a selective plate where we can kill off the gram positives, kill off the gram negatives. I don't like to do that first because it's not a tried and true. It's not always the best method, but we're gonna try this first and see if we can isolate those based on our street plate and see how that goes. So we, got, we have two extra days than last semester, so we have a little bit more time to make sure before you do anything else that you have two different organisms. So that's our priority one. And then back stock. So keeping that back stock fresh. So you have to re-inoculate um, every time to get a fresh back stock so that your organisms don't die but for the next time that you come. Um, anything else? Okay, so any, any important little notes I have, I'll tell you for that little notebook. So keep that little notebook sheet and if there's any other like oh don't forget this is really important I'll have you put it on that sheet so that you are clear about how to do that yeah um, if you don't mind sharing what percentages do usually identify their own I would say almost all it's usually like two students have the wrong organism at the end I don't think I've ever had more than two yeah but it's usually about two the curiosity question. We have what seven labs or so you said to do this. Uh -huh. How many uh, how many days does like a real lab turn around uh, getting the colony, identifying it, and sending it back to I it myself, you know, which I'm not like I do all the same inoculation techniques you guys do. I do all the same gram seeding you guys do. I could probably do a gram seed in seven to eleven minutes at the most. So that wouldn't take me very long. It takes me longer than the microscope. I like to take time in the microscope. Um, but I would say for me to identify my organism would probably take me three class periods, but you have seven. So I, I already know what I'm doing. I've already seen the process. So it'll take you a day longer to figure it out, but I don't think it will take you that long. And side note, that last day is, the day before the Thanksgiving break, like Thanksgiving day. So if you guys are done, you're done. You can be done. Yeah. So you don't have to come in at all. I can do online lecture if you guys want to. Totally up to you. But I don't want you to also to feel stressed, like if you need that extra day. Are you talking about the Tuesday before? The, the Tuesday before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, let me go get those and we'll get we'll get that all situated today. Oh, one more thing I wanted to tell you guys before we go. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, so I'll grab our posters to, um, right now and let you guys head down there. And then I just need to check in on the backstock of our unknowns and figure out what's going on with that. Yeah. Oh yes, we do have a note card today. Yeah, let's do that in the lab. Don't even forget. Is it better to do it here? Do you guys want to just do it really quick while we're here? Let's just do it.
Okay, this is plasmodium falciparum, which is also causes what? Malaria. Here's the trophozoite. Here is the cyst. These are red blood cells. Here's what they look like under a microscope. And here's the bathroom. No, nothing in gray. I put a lot of gray information on there. I just think that's information that's cool. So intermittent chronic illness related to a blood disorder or systemic infection. So if you think systemic, you think you're thinking bloodborne, then you think systemic um, symptoms. So fever, chills, headache, fatigue, abdominal pain, muscle pain, long-term sequelae. So the long-term consequences of having malaria are severe anemia. So Obviously, because of the red blood cells will lice, and the patient can be iron deficient and oxygen deficient. Um, pneumonia, um, they, it can lead to pneumonia, it can lead to acidosis, kidney failure, encephalopathy, you don't have to write any of that down. Childbirth issues, um, stillbirth, infant mortality, miscarriage, low birth weight, this is why it's also a huge problem is for pregnant women. Um, it's extremely common, 241 million clinical episodes, 627,000 deaths, 2,000 in the United States. Every two minutes, a child dies of malaria. So um, you can watch this. I'll just let you guys watch that on your own. I'm not going to ask you about the life cycle of malaria, but I do think it's really important to know more about malaria as a microbiologist. And to just just watch through it one time on like one and a half, it's actually a super fast video, but it tells you about. Sorry, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it tells you about their life cycle, which I think is very important to know. So when you get when you go down to the lab, grab your lab out, your um, transformation lab, and make sure everybody has their full PPE on. Grab your transformation lab out. Start going through the questions on your transformation lab. We don't have any free. Do we have free labs today? No, no free labs today. Okay, so just 